Good morning, friends. Welcome to today's satsang, which is on rediscovery of your true self within. How do we usually take a moment to think? How do we usually define ourselves? As Surina Ji said in this beautiful reading, that we do it more in terms of the physical or the mental thoughts and emotions. I'm a woman, I'm a man, I'm of average height, I'm happy, I'm sad. Don't we usually do that? But is that all that we are? What are we? There's a very beautiful story by Sri Ramakrishna Paramhans, a Bengali saint. And he says that there was a poor woodcutter living near the forest. And um, he barely manages to eke out a living also. And he met a sadhu and he does something nice for the sadhu. And the sadhu feels that he's a good man, let me help him. And he tells this woodcutter, you go into the forest and there you'll find a treasure. And you take that and you, you know, uh, sell it and earn your living. So the woodcutter is really happy and he goes into the forest. And there he sees trees and trees of sandalwood. So he cuts those and he sells them and for a couple of years, three years, he has a very good existence. But the sadhu comes back, happens to be back on the same way and he says, Oh, I didn't tell you to stop at the sandalwood trees, go deeper. So this woodcutter says, okay, and he goes deeper. And as he goes deeper into the forest, he sees mountains of silver. And then he takes that very happily, sells that, and he manages to again become quite rich. But again the sadhu meets him after a few years and says, really, you stopped at that? Did I tell you to stop there? Just keep going deeper, you'll find a treasure. So he said, okay, and he goes deeper and he finds gold. And again the same thing happens, the sadhu comes back. Finally, he goes really deep and he finds mountains and mountains of precious stones and huge diamonds, the real treasure of treasures. Similarly, if we go beyond our body, when we go beyond our thoughts, when we go beyond our emotions, that's where we find that real treasure within ourselves. We find that real self. And this real self, when we talk about it, when I hear about it or read about it, how do I visualize it? I feel it's like this circle of dot of light maybe at the point between the eyebrows or the heart. Some teachings say it's like a thumb or flame inside. Is that it? So suppose we think that we are the body, then what is our existence? When I'm in my physical body, what is my being confined to? Just my physical body, right? I'm all in this. When I think of my mind, then maybe it's little expansive. For example, all of us are sitting here. Right now in our bodies, we are all confined in this room. But where's our mind? Perhaps some of us are tired of this pollution of Delhi. And we are roaming the mountains of Switzerland. In our summer holidays we had experienced, or somewhere in the Himalayas, that's where I need to be. Interestingly, Switzerland has one of the lowest AQIs. <laughs> so, you know, that is where our mind can go. It has a more expansive consciousness. But what about the soul? What about that inner self within? When Yoganandji described this experience of cosmic consciousness, he said, I am in everything. Everything is in me. I am limitless. I am eternal joy. So if we have all that within ourselves, all this treasure within ourselves, so why aren't we living with it? What is the problem? There's this analogy, even Shailesh sang that uh, song, I am the bubble, make me the sea. What does it tell us? That we are like waves of the sea, right? There are waves of the sea on the surface and then there's that ocean, unmoving, still ocean underneath. And the waves of the sea, every storm, every disturbance, every little breeze that comes, what happens? It rises and falls, rises and falls. But the ocean below stays undisturbed. If there's sunshine outside or storm, it stays unmoved. Right? So this is what our existence is. Somebody comes here, shows us hatred and anger. 
we reach the lowest of our lows. Suddenly somebody praises us, we reach a high wave, right? And constantly we are going in that flow. What do we need to do? Our affirmation also, deep calmness, when we stay within ourselves. Life is about choices in every moment of our day. Where do we choose to be? To be in that true self, like that ocean depth, or flowing like the waves, getting disturbed by every emotion, finding that to be the truth of our life, that I need to pamper my body, I need to pamper my emotions and thoughts. If then we, stay, we remain in that. Anybody who derides, disrespects, what do we do? Most of the time we have a averse reaction, right? But what about if you've read the autobiography of a yogi, Yoganandji spent many years with his guru Yukteswarji. And Yukteswarji was known for his sharp tongue. And he would be very sarcastic and very derisive as well. And a lot of disciples left because they couldn't handle this. But what about Yoganandji? Some disciples came to him and said, you know, Let's go, you lead us and we'll follow you. And he said, no way. You can go where you want. I have not come to build up my ego itself. I have not come to build up more walls. I have come to break my ego walls. So that then I can go inside and find that real treasure of my true self. He wanted, he liked that discipline of being able to control his reactions. Right? He was able to choose that I want to live in my true self. And then later on in his years he says that, you know, when I went to America, then in the 1920s, this training of Yukteswarji really <coughs> gave me good training, gave me good stead because I was able to handle the situations that came up in a foreign country. And at that time in the 1920s, there was a lot of cultural difference between America and India. They had there not even heard about Hindus, let alone see somebody in an orange robe. And Yoganandji tells us many such instances. One of that, he said he was in a train and there was an orthodox minister traveling on the same train and they get into conversation and this minister doesn't, uh, doesn't like the fact that Yoganandji doesn't agree to a lot of his dogmas and beliefs. And he just gets really angry and red in face. He shouts at Yoganandji, you will go to hell. And Yoganandji, how would we have reacted? He just said, in a very friendly manner, I may, I may get there by and by, but you, my friend, are there already. <laughs> and he faced a lot of experiences like that. But the interesting part in all these experiences were, what would we have said? Oh, poor me. They, these people hate me so much. Oh, my God. You know, but what did he say? He just wanted to help them. His only reaction when sitting there and listening to them, anybody who was hostile to him, abused him, he would just sit there, listen, and the only thought in his mind was of love. Because he truly had realized what Sri Krishna said in the Gita, that I am the true self in all beings. So essentially, we are all one. And he felt the pain of these people. And he wanted to help them. And the funny thing was, when most of these people came to him, agitated, angry, abusive, all of them, at the end of their conversation with him, either turned to him for help, became his follower, or at least calmed down and realized what he was. <laughs> so this is really living in the true nature of our own, you know. We feel, what is this true nature that we talk about? Is it in philosophy? Is it in, you know, in these religious books? Is this what we really are? Because when we reach out to people at that soul level, people feel it and react. So is this really true? Again, Yoganandji, somewhere in conversation, he tells us that forget philosophy, forget religion. What is our basic instinct? What is our basic instinct? If you've all read Charles Darwin's theory of evolution, it's survival, right? So he said he had it right in that instance at least, that survival is our basic instinct. We want to always exist. Anyone here wants to die? 
we all want to perpetually exist forever right and do we want to be in coma as we exist do we want to be unconscious we want to be fully conscious to enjoy this life right and what else do we want we want happiness any one here who goes to have you know uh, to get pain deliberately or we move towards happiness so what are we looking for we are all wanting to exist perpetually wanting to be conscious and we all naturally want to exist in that state of joy and what is that sat chit anand right that is how shankaracharya describes god sat chit anand ever existing ever conscious ever new joy and that is our divine nature maybe we don't realize that it's within us but we are looking for it where are we looking for it yeah outside probably but when we stop looking for those fleeting joys which go up and down outside then we find that that basic nature is within ourselves of sat chit anand there's another story of uh, yukteswar ji and uh, yoganand ji so yoganand ji gets very impatient with all the ashram duties in his guru's ashram and he says i am going to the himalayas to find god so yukteswar ji is not exactly very approving but uh, yoganand ji ignores that so he goes into the mountains and he then after various experiences realizes that enlightenment will only come with a self realized master like yukteswar ji and he comes back and he says i am back guru ji and yukteswar ji is like oh you're back come come let's go to the kitchen find something to eat and yoganand ji said what are you not upset i just left all my duties and i just went to bed aren't you upset and angry with me even my earthly father when i didn't take up the job was so angry he didn't speak to me for days so you then yukteswar ji says that you know i do not expect anything from anyone in this world so my happiness does not depend on anybody in fact whatever i do is for your own happiness you choose to stay you choose to go i am happy in your happiness om oh. and i read the topic i was thinking uh, what does this mean and then the question came up who am i now i have been here with ananda for many years and i have read the teachings and uh, you know theoretical knowledge i have oh yeah i am the soul satchidanand hmm? i said uh, does that really i mean how does it how do i relate to it now i had some experiences i have had one grand very brief experience of who i really am the witnessing conscious but uh, for most parts i am this body so i kept thinking what am i going to say in satsang how 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 does this topic really relate to me <clears throat> so a lot of thoughts came up and then let me share a very recent experience and why i'm sharing this is that uh we perceive ourselves we conceive of ourselves in many different ways uh maybe we think of ourselves at a macro level as a man or a woman as a banker as an industrialist as a teacher father mother and there's so many of them but at a certain levels also we keep you know uh, having these preconceived notions which we form of ourselves so this is one of that story uh and how we can break through you know how we can go within to who we truly are so it's a small story uh very recently i went to baba ji's cave and uh, i dri- drove down alone and uh, i reached a place called uh, dwarahat it's a small town just before uh, the final where the road ends near baba ji's cave where i was going to stay so it was the shara tuesday the market place was closed empty and i stopped there to buy some fruits and i was hailed by this elderly gentleman from south india they wanted a lift they were also going to baba ji's cave and it turned out they were going to stay at the same place where i was staying so i gave the two a lift now this elderly gentleman is very bubbly and very talkative i don't like to talk much uh, so he is like he is very excited ma'am i'm coming for baba ji's cave for the first time and i'm going to receive so much of energy and i go what i've been here twice i don't remember i don't experience any receiving any energy 
So this was the first doubt that was put in my mind and I was thinking, I said, maybe, you know, I'm not ready to receive the energy. Maybe I've turned the cup of my heart upside down and Guruji and Babaji is trying, they're trying to give me energy and I'm not ready to receive it. So that thought comes into my mind and I'm really troubled. So on the way, there is this uh, Devi Ka Mandir and I stopped there. Previous uh, visit to that area, I had a wonderful experience and um, I tell my hitchhiker guest, husband, wife, I said, look, I'm going up, so you can come up or you can stay here. So they come up, we have to climb some 365 steps and we go up to the mandir and I do the darshan and I, there is a small uh, <clears throat> place uh, dedicated to Babaji. I sit there, I meditate briefly, I come down and these gentlemen and this wife, are, uh, their lady, they are coming down. And when we meet up in the car, this gentleman is emotional about it. Virtually with tears in his eyes, he's expressing gratitude that because of me, they have managed to, you know, do the darshan of a Devi on Tuesday on the Shera and they're so excited. And I'm stunned. I wanted to go. I went. I did the darshan, did namaste, offered the uh, puja, the uh, prasad, and I came back and I never thought of it. I didn't give it any more importance. And here this man is so... And you know how I took it? I have no devotion. I am dry. This man is devoted. Look at him. And with these two thoughts, my next two days were terrible. <laughs> I was depressed. Truly, truly. Believe me, I said, you know, uh, leaving my family and going off, they are not very happy. So I have to like, you know be a little rude or rough or you know like curt and I'm saying why am I here I'm missing my work I'm losing money I'm lo you know my family my mother my wife are not happy with it why am I coming here I don't receive that energy I have no devotion why so third day something miraculous happens at least that's the way I look at it so I go and there is some gentleman, another gentleman from, I, who's that uh, Rajnikanth, who's a devotee of uh, Babaji? So some family member I'm told is there, he's doing some puja. And I'm thinking, yaar, wah, you know, this gentleman has come with entire uh, paraphernalia or prasad bhi hai or puja bhi kar raha hai. So I get a prasad and I'm, thank you Babaji, prasad mila, aaj, kam se kam, kus to mila. And then they leave and then I, you know, I go inside the cave. And I see people have put beautiful flowers on the edge. There is a diya. And then another tomb. People have come with their offerings. I come here empty handed. What? No devotion. So and then I team up with these three other people. And then we go and we uh, do a havan. Beautiful little havan. Just uh, by the side of uh, there is another spot. Uh, and then we see another cave, we explore, we don't go inside, but yeah, the cave is there. And then coming back, I'm thanking Babaji that, okay, you know, like maybe it's a coincidence, but I take it as a sign that you are, you know, giving me this experience and I'm very happy. And then suddenly running, I start running down the mountain. So those of you who have gone to that cave, they'll, you know, it's pretty steep. And I'm skipping and I'm running and the thought comes to him, why is there so much energy in me? Where has this energy come? And then, oh my God, I am give, being given a tangible evidence, experience of the subtle energy so that I understand that, yes, I may not identify it, but I do get energy when I come. Babaji has read my thoughts and received, you know, sort of given me that experience. When I reached home and I shared all my experiences with my family, my daughter said, Dad, look, that gentleman's devotion was more emotional. You, do, you are devoted also, but it's less emotional. And I realized, yes, she's right. I have devotion. And there is no way, unless I did not have that devotion, that Babaji would have actually reached out and given me those experiences. So here, suddenly, I was shown my truer self. I'm not saying the ultimate true self, but one little peel was removed 
and that preconceived notion that I had formed because of extraneous uh, circumstances <coughs> that, uh, you know, no, I have devotion in me. I, I, I do have love inside me. I do experience energy. Now, another small thing I would like to say, as uh, Surina ji was reading this thing, and I was reminded of a Bollywood movie song, Attracted by false glamour of material pleasures, it squanders its wealth of inner peace, etc. Sense objects, however, and sense experiences can never give man the peace and happiness it wants. Now, I have read these many times. You know the Hindi, uh, this thing, the Sher, Lakho Khwaishe or Har Khwaish Aisi Ki Dam Nikle or something like that. Hazaron khwaishe? I have lakho. Anyway, I have karodon khwaishe. And I, have, I know this. I know the teaching. But the, as the Hindi movie song goes, Dil hai ki manta hi nahi. And I realize that I have all these, you know, threads, tentacles going out to the sense pleasures and my desires. And uh, I drive to work every day. Uh, I love driving. Uh, in rec because of this odd even thing, I decided that I'm, uh, and I've been wanting to previously also, to take the metro to work. So I did take the metro to work. And when I was in the metro, what I realized was that, uh, you know, the people all around, and you look at somebody and the judgmental part of me gets active. You know, maybe it's the color of hair or the clothes or there are two people sitting and talking or maybe there's a young couple and stories, you know, judgmental and the stories and, you know, things start off. So I, I noticed that. I said, why? Why should I be like that? So I closed my eyes and I started chanting Om at Chakra. Just go up and down, go up and down. Have you done that? I, uh, so you, it's wonderful. Now, uh, we are taught to withdraw our sense, senses, right? So just by closing the eyes and bringing my attention to my chakra, I was actually able to change a lot of it. So uh, why I'm sharing this with you is that perhaps little by little, we can actually reduce our... Um, interaction with the world while being in the world. Hat Kamvich, this is Bulle Shah's, uh, for his, uh, this thing, saying, Hat Hat Kamvich or Dil Yarvich. So, thank you.